Sunday night football from MT Bank Stadium. Ravens in all black, by the way, the black on black combo. That's my favorite. Um, and they are taking on an AFC North opponent in the Cincinnati Bengals. This should be a really good one. And this is an opportunity for both teams, uh, both sitting at two and two, um, both had some excruciating losses and um, some dignified wins. But now it's time for that tiebreaker because the winner of this game, they take first place in the AFC North. And I know it's super, super early. It's very, very early. Uh, but this can sort of be a confidence boost to whichever team comes out with the victory. Because you'd much rather be sitting at three and two than two and three. Even though it's a long season up ahead, you want to try to get ahead of this long season. Um, but to talk about this game, because you know we could talk about it all day, all every day, but it's a very special game, so I had to bring on two very, very extremely special guests. Let's get into it. Yeah, this feels like a dream. So team keep it clean two very 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 special guests in the building you know this is a very special video because it's a very special game um two afc north teams sitting at two and two uh two very different vibes right now from both of these teams but i had to bring on uh the fellas my guy ace my guy zim uh from new stripe city and this is actually yeah now that i think about it, this is the first time that we got zim on the channel um, so welcome to the both of y'all. I, I appreciate the both of y'all for joining us. Um, yes, before sir. we get into it, because we got we got some good stuff to talk about. Uh, before we get into it, let everybody know what y'all do, where they can find you, and the whole nine. Yes, sir. So me, myself, I represent New Stripe City, Die Hard YouTube channel for Bengals fans. Also with my partner, Zim, we have the Cincinnati podcast uh, together, which is me and him going in in depth. We also have a couple of other people on that network with us. So if you are looking for the Bengals aspect on things, you want to get behind the MMA lines, check us out on there. You can also follow me on Twitter at New Stripe City. Yeah, like my partner A said, you know, um, you can check me out on Winston Addy Pod. We got a couple of other shows that we do on there, too, uh, for some of our other uh, analysts and guys that break down stuff. So that's really dope, too, if you just want to get an in-depth look. But then also you can check me out on Z at Zim Hude on Twitter and Zim underscore Hude on Instagram and I do a bunch of shows. Like, I do a Madden simulator. I do a bunch of stuff. So right now, like, the best way is just my Twitter, and then you'll see all the links and stuff fly out there in zimhuday.com. All right, appreciate it. And I will have the links to, to all of this stuff, the Winsonetti pod, the New Stripe City, the Twitters, all that, the Instagram. Everything's going to be down below uh, in the description. So we got a big game on Sunday night. Prime time, the world uh, will be watching. Um, the 2-2 two two Ravens taking on the 2-2 two two Bengals. Right now, how would y'all say the vibe is right now for Bengals fans? It's, you know, it's one of those things where I think people kind of, Joe Burrow, when we were 0-2, he came to the podium and he said, everybody relax. Because it was like this state of shock where no one thought that the Bengals, if you're a Bengals fan, thought they would be 0-2. Since he said that, you know, like he's thrown six touchdowns, no interceptions. He's leading the AFC North in yards, all these all these other different things. He's doing really good. And I feel like he's kind of got the fan base back into our motion a little bit. But there's still like a reoccurring theme of a good amount of fans are still questioning a lot of different things with the coaching. There's mm. still PTSD from different, you know, things that the Bengals have failed at many times in past. So that's always going to be there. So. I think ultimately for this game, the average fan, I think, feels really confident when they look at like some of the matchups, uh, whether it be like the, you know, the defense, um, the passing yards allowed and stuff uh, as it relates to as it relates to what we do best. And that's passing the football. Right. But but at the end of the day, it's still the Ravens and it's still a team that you better respect. And it's just a concept that I'm 
if you aren't prepared and a team comes out flat, especially like these divisionals game, you'll get your butt whooped. Mm-hmm. I think everybody really realizes that, and I don't think there's a person alive that's a – I don't know how the Ravens fans feel, but I don't feel like any Bengals fan think like they're whooping the Ravens. I, I think that they feel confident in winning, and I speak for myself. I think that they – you know, I feel pretty good about the game. You know, you, there's a lot of things I guess we'll talk about, though. Oh, yeah, yeah for, sure. for me, I would probably say – Along with them, I think a lot of us were thrown off with the 0-2 to start, um, but I feel like they kind of found themselves in these last two games. And it's like, okay, this is the team that we remember from last year showing some of those strides that we've seen them take recently. Um, mm-hmm. And they seem to be – they seem like they're back. I, I hate to say it because it's cliche, but it seems like we're back. <laughs> now, um, I haven't got a chance to watch uh, a lot of Bengals. I did get to see the end – of that first that that game with the craziness with the Pittsburgh Steelers and that was just wild. Um, and then I also got to catch uh, the Dolphins game um, just the the other Thursday night. Um, but how would y'all say the Bengals have sort of responded to adversity? I know you mentioned Joe Burrow told everybody just to chill, just to relax. He ended up throwing six touchdowns and no interceptions. Um, but how how have you seen this team respond just as a collective unit? Uh, to the adversity that, that that they faced this season? I think we haven't seen them panic. I mean, I think even when they were 0-2, you know, we didn't see a lot of panicking from the players, didn't see much panicking from the coaching staff. Um, so I think that they just believed that they would get this thing right. And I think they've just really kind of righted that ship, rallied around each other, and just maintained uh, what they needed to do, which was go out and win these two games put themselves back in the position, knowing that it's a long season. And so I think that they've done that. Mm, okay. Now, if um, we, we know about Joe Burrow, we, we definitely know about Jamar Chase. Uh, very familiar with Mr. 4th and 12, Tyler Boyd. Uh, we know about T. Higgins. We even got some a little bit of familiarity with that guy, Hayden Hurst. Um, we know about Joe Mixon. But who would y'all say um, is somebody, and we'll do one for each side of the ball, one on uh, Bengals offense and one on Bengals defense who Ravens really need to look out for. Let's start with the offense. Though. On offense, I mean, you just hit on – I mean, it, it's, it's, it's Jamar Chase and, and T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd. Is, it, you know, my, my brother here, he made a shirt called Amigos before, like, and it, yeah. and it blew up and it, and it put the oh, three yeah, guys yeah. on there because mm-hmm. – it's not a crazy concept. I look at everything in life like it's all about opportunities. These are three guys that are over a thousand yard receivers multiple times. History tells us, talent tells us, if you just give these guys the ball, more than not, you're going to win a football game. It's not like rocket science. We don't have to go into like a big X and O. Like the games that we lose, they fail to get the ball them early in the game. Now, if the pass rush is disruptive enough, then you know that. It's like that. That's just like the bread and butter of it. It's like it's those three guys. Like if you, but I mean, I guess it goes with Joe Mixon. But we've proven we can win games without it. But on mm-hmm. offense, I just it's, it's those three wide receivers. If you can't check them, there is no way in my mind that you know the Bengals offensively could be stopped. On defense, a guy that I think that y'all should be watching for is a King Davis Gaither. All off season, I heard that the Bengals were super healthy. We just came off our show and just said this. They weren't. Like, there were many guys that were missing last year that we really, really liked. Akeem Davis Gaither was a guy that played in the first game in the Week 7 matchup against Lamar, and he was the guy that they used as a spy. Mm -hmm. I thought he did phenomenal in that game. That's not a household name, but this guy then gets injured for the rest of the season, I think the following week after that. And then take it forward to now this season. A uh, couple of weeks ago, Jermaine Pratt goes out, uh, our, our other uh, weak side linebacker. Mm-hmm. He goes out. Akeem Davis Gaither has 12 tackles and balls like his, he balls like out of control. His hair's on fire. Take it to the Miami Dolphins game. Had another phenomenal game, too. So that's another guy that he's very quick. We love our linebackers, and I just think that that him and Logan Wilson are two guys that just show up like on every single play, whether it's good or bad. They're going to be there. Now, um, speaking of defense, uh, you talked about your linebackers, and I know, yeah, Logan Wilson, he'd be doing his thing. Um, but let's let's get to the secondary. Um, we saw 
last week. Oh, and I just realized y'all are coming off of, y'all going to be coming off of a 10 day break. Um, but we saw last week with Von Bell. Um, it was Von, Von Bell's number 24, right? Yeah. Well, he, um, he, he was just feeling extra greedy last week. He's like, you know what? I'm going to intercept Tua. And you know, you know, as a matter of fact, I'll intercept Teddy as well. Uh, I'm going to get two. Um, but somebody else <laughs> who I'm sure was really looking forward to the game last week, especially um, after uh, Tyreek Hill had called him out, Mr. Eli Apple. Uh, and he has been a big topic of conversation um, amongst amongst a lot of Ravens fans, uh, amongst Bengals fans, of course, too. How has Eli Apple been this season so far? Eli is just similar to what he was last season, solid. Like, I think a lot of people really look at Eli Apple and they think about his time with the Giants and the Saints, and they just mm. think that that's who he is. Um, he hasn't been that with Cincinnati. He's been very solid. He hasn't been a guy that's been a liability or anything like that. He's, you know, made plays where he's broken up balls, made the play. Uh, he's just been a solid guy. And I think a lot of teams look at it and they're like, okay, we're going to go at Eli Apple. But it's not like how it was years ago when the Bengals had some some liabilities in the secondary where you could just target a specific guy and get a first down every time. Eli's just been the epitome of solid. Um, and I think that he gets a bad rap, but honestly, he's a very solid player. A lot of people thought that, you know, he was the weakness in the secondary. He would be replaced. That just hasn't been the case. The guy has played extremely solid. And I give a lot of credit to Lou Anarumu, our defensive coordinator, that was a former secondary coach for developing him. You know, he was one of his coaches uh, in New York. So obviously he saw something with him there, uh, brought him to Cincinnati. And I think has really just done a great job of developing him into a, a solid corner. OK, appreciate that. And what about opposite of him with Cheeto as he looked? Oh, Cheeto's a dog. Tell him, Zim. Cheeto is a dog, man. <laughs> hey, bro, I'm telling you right now, I, I feel like I was telling Ace this the other day. I feel like the game plan, like just to kind of skip a little bit ahead, it, I feel like they should just put Cheeto on an island with whoever, like every single week. Like he's <laughs> never failed me in that aspect. The only the only wide receiver that has gotten off on him in the last two years has been A.J. Brown. And we won that game. And, and in that game, it was just two big passes. And one of the passes was like some incredible throw. He's gone up against every wide receiver one that you could think of. Like mm -hmm. Cheeto Bay Awuzie should be mentioned in the top 10 corners in football right, right mm -hmm. now. Like uh, Ace had a stat with his numbers versus Jalen Ramsey last year. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not even close. We've interviewed him on our pod. We, I, I consider him a friend. Like he's, he's mm -hmm. one of the MVPs of the defense. Okay, I love it. So, you know what, J jump into this game. Um, where do you feel that the Bengals, uh, as far as their defense first, where they could really, really, because you talked about the offense with how uh, the Ravens passing offense it hasn't been the best so far, um, and how the uh, those receivers can really get after it with that. Um, but on defense, how do you feel like the, the Bengals can really attack the Ravens this week? Uh, for me, defensively, I think it would probably – revolve around some of the things that they did last year not complete cover zero but mixing up the looks like i think that's one thing that lou is really good at they've actually ran some tampa two this season uh but i think the main thing is is trying to get pressure with four right trying to confuse mm -hmm. lj throw him some looks that might be confusing as they did with lj mahomes last year that's kind of their bread and butter right and then trying to force any kind of turnover that you can and then getting off of the off of the field on third down like if you can stop any team on third down and just get off of the field that's mm -hmm. a victory i think for the defense you're not going to contain or you're not going to stop this Ravens offense, right? You're talking about the number one scoring offense in the league, but you got to contain them. And I think you try to bend but not break and, and try to get as many stops as you can against this offense to get uh, against that offense to give it back to your offense. Okay. Can I give you? Can I give you some stats really quick on the Bengals defense, who I think has carried the whole entire team? Right. They're the fourth, they've allowed the fourth least least amount of rushing yards, the fourth lowest number of rushing first downs allowed, the second least passing touchdowns the third lowest completion percentage, the second least amount of time on the field, the fourth least uh, QBR allowed, the third least third down completion percentage allowed in the whole entire NFL on all those. And there's a – now, the competition that they have faced is nowhere near Lamar Jackson level. But some of those same guys that we played did work on a lot of different people. 
like Flacco had a really good game on some other people. Like there's some guys that did some really good Cooper Rush or whatever did really good on some other guys. The Bengals on paper right now are a top five defense, but they haven't played anybody yet. Not not to the level of the Ravens. Mm, okay. And yeah, that's a good point. Um now as far as the pass rush, because Ravens oh, offensive Dolphins. line um Ravens offensive line has been a little bit shaky. Um run blocking just really hasn't been there, but pass blocking has been up and down. Uh Trey Hendrickson, um, who was uh has been a great pickup for y'all from New Orleans. Uh Sean Hubbard, how, how has the Bengals pass rush been this year so far? So far it's like it's it's above average. It, they mm-hmm. have about seven sacks on the whole entire season as a collective. I thought that Trey Hendrickson has gone against some really good guys. Like I thought he just went against Taron Armstead. I kind of misspoke on like offense. Like coming into this that last game, the Dolphins were red hot. They they were the most efficient third down team. Mm-hmm. They were on fire. So I did. That is one team that did get off. But but Trey Hendrickson saw his toughest matchup. I thought with Taron Armstead this past week, and he looked really good in the third and fourth quarter. Early in that game, they were, like, helping Taron Armstead out, which I didn't think that they would do. Mm -hmm. Um, But ultimately, Sam Hubbard looks really, really good. B.J. Hill is very, very underrated uh, uh, defensive tackle. Now, the number one guy that we, me and H, just did our quarter awards just now on our show in Cincinnati, the number one guy that I feel like is the number one, I always call him the Joe Burrow of our defense, D.J. Reader. Mm. He's predominantly a run defender. Mm. But this season, he had been offering some pass rush that I had never seen before. Like maybe early in his Texans days or whatever, but he's on injured reserve right now. So that is one thing that I think Bengals fans are a little bit worried about. But from a pass rush standpoint altogether, Trey Hendrickson, to me, is one of the premier pass rushes in the NFL. But the guys that he's gone against early in the season – uh, you know, it, it was some tough ones. And then when he got a weak matchup against the Jets, he was AFC, like, player of the week, like, two sacks, two fun work up. Like, if your tackle, if your left tackle, whatever, isn't up to par, he's going to eat. Like, that's that's not that's, that's not changing. Like, okay, yeah, we've seen a lot of people putting chip blocks on Hend- Hendrickson this year, which we didn't to. see much of that last year. Oh, okay, so, yeah, yeah, I guess he definitely took his game to another level then. Now, um... We talked about the pass rush. So let's flip it to, to Ravens pass rush because uh, Ravens pass rush has been – it's been rough this year. It's been really rough, but it's been rough for a, a long period of time. Um, but definitely this year it has just – it hasn't been getting home uh, consistently. Now, Bengals. We know Bengals, of course, last year Joe Burrow uh, was sacked a lot, a whole lot. Um, and Bengals, they made some upgrades to that offensive line. Um, but how how have those upgrades in that offensive line been doing around Joe Burrow? I think initially the first two games, they struggled, right? I'd be lying mm. to you if, if I'd said that they weren't, right? 13 sacks in two games. Mm. Uh, it's funny because we were talking about our, our disappointments, and Zim, I forgot to mention Jonah Williams on that one. Um, Jonah Williams, I think this season has really – kind of had an uncharacteristic season for him, right? Uh, I think he's given up about four of those sacks on his side. Uh, we also have seen some issues from Lyle Collins early on, but I will say uh, the rookie that we have, Cordell Volson, he's really shown some strides. Ted Karras, he definitely took some strides the last couple of games. And just the last two games, they've only allowed two sacks. So I think the light is finally coming on with this offensive line. Now, it could be that they weren't facing the Micah Parsons and the TJ Watt, right? Um, in those situations, they have looked a lot a lot uh, suspect. But in the last two games against the Jets and against the Dolphins, they have really shored up the offensive line, and they've really, uh, I feel like, suited up those fronts. So as far as Owe, if he is looking for someone that he might have some production on, it possibly could be Jonah Williams. But I think that I am confident that the line will be able to protect Burrow in this one. Okay. All right. So, in closing, because this let me is be let me oh, say wait, this wait, real wait. quick too. Let wait. me say this real quick. A lot of people are down on the Bengals' offensive line, like earlier, like from the outside. Even mm. when they gave up seven sacks, they were better than last year. Like, <laughs> like they were bad last year, bro. Like it's just Joe was kind of trying to get into a rhythm. 
you know, it, it's just, you know, you know how it goes. Like your offensive line for your for you guys, like with Makari and, and different guys like that, like it, it takes time to like get with the guy that's right next to you. You know, mm-hmm. like it just doesn't happen overnight. And another big factor, and Ace hit on it, is this. When teams, and I saw this in the Giants game when the Cowboys played the Giants. When teams play Micah Parsons, I'm here to tell you, you know how you were, I remember you found me one week, if this is last year, and you were like telling me about like Jamar Chase, you was like, I don't know what we're going to do. Like, I don't know your exact words, but you was like, bro, like they're, I'm here to tell you, when you play Micah Parsons, I'm, bro, I'm dead serious. Like, I feel like my, if there's a top 10 in the NFL, Micah Parsons got to be in it. And I'm not mm-hmm. saying that just because of the Bengals game. Any game that he meant wrecks yeah. games. It does mm-hmm. anything that you want to do wrecks your game? Anything like and TJ Watt did that in the first game, and Bengals just recovered from it. Mm-hmm. And TJ Watt, there's different things you could do to. There's nothing you could do to Michael Parsons, bro. Like mm-hmm. he's playing. Like I seen a, a a cut up today where somebody was comparing him to like Lawrence Taylor, and I was like, bro, shut up. They were showing side by side plays of Lawrence Taylor and Michael Parsons. Like you, he's got a bull rush that is like. JJ Watt in his prime, but he's got the speed of it's like, like a four three four four kind of. Bro, speed. he's yeah, got this, crazy. Like, and, and then the crazy thing is <laughs> they line him up everywhere. So yeah. anything that you want to play, if you don't mm-hmm. have protection or extra guy to slide on that side, he wrecked the game. And before we knew it, we were down like 14-3. And then we mm-hmm. had to go and fight and tie the game back up. But a lot of people like man, the offense. He made Lyle Collins look like a rookie, bro. Like he, and he made him look both of them. He, he beat both of them. He, yeah, because he was everywhere. They were, they were, bro. I'm look. <laughs> when you play the, do y- y'all play the Cowboys, right? Mm. Don't, oh no, y'all don't. Because I think y'all no, play the. We, e- man. Okay. So, so I maybe I y'all can dodge. Right him. Y'all can dodge him. But uh, but I'm gonna tell you, bro. Like that the one thing about our offensive line that people don't do is give enough. Sometimes when our players and you might do this, you might see this a lot. Sometimes when our players don't perform that we like a lot, a lot of people blame coaching. They blame the player themselves. I like to look at who am I facing sometimes. So mm-hmm. the offensive line didn't look that great in week one, week two. But if you go look at that film on them games, T.J. Watt looked amazing in that game. Micah Parsons looked amazing. Week mm-hmm. three. They didn't have the, they didn't have that guy, <laughs> and we had a Trey Hendrickson, and we looked amazing. And so mm-hmm. it was it, it's one of those things that you got to kind of look at. If Owe can disrupt and do, be who you want him to be, I feel mm-hmm. like that he is the key to the game uh, coming up Sunday night. Oh yeah, for sure. And I know context matters. Uh, something that I, I've heard you bring out a lot. Uh, with context, especially with the Bengals' offensive line, is that um you talked about how Joe Burrow uh, he would hold on to the ball, uh, just really trying to make something happen. So in, in the res- the result of that was him taking a lot of sacks. Um, so I know you sort of called them like sort of good sacks in a way, uh, because Joe Burrow is just trying to make a play, and we do see that with a lot of uh young quarterbacks. Um, now in, in closing, game prediction from the both of y'all. How do y'all think this one is gonna go? I think this is going to be like the game that everybody's been asking for. I don't think it's going to be a blowout either way. I think it's going to be a game that's going to come down to probably a field goal when it's all said and done, maybe a touchdown. Um, But I think that it's going to be, you know, something that lives up to the hype, Sunday Night Football. I think whenever we have these Bengals and Ravens games, they're always exciting. They're always um, a a good battle. You're going to see Lamar Jackson. You're going to see Joe Burrow. You're going to see – a lot of guys on both sides. So, and you're going to see two teams that don't really like each other, right? And they want to be, you know, the top of the division. So, I think this is a very important game. I think it's the game of the week. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I, I got the Bengals barely winning this one. Um, I think that we're going to try to get make a statement in this game, being that we crawled back from 0 2. I think that they're going to try to take advantage of this game. Okay. All right. Zim, I'm in this. I feel like the Bengals, you know, like our fan base is like saying, man, take advantage of it, go crazy or whatever. And I just, I can't see that. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I don't see like a blowout on either side. I feel like the defense has got to carry us for most of this game. And and I think that that's what I think will happen. And, and Lamar's going to be Lamar, you know what I'm saying? So I think the Bengals maybe by a touchdown – I don't, I don't think it's three points. I think maybe a touch. That's just, that's just what my gut tells me. I, I, I wish it would be more comfortable, 
and my heart wouldn't be, you know, all pumping and all crazy and stuff like that. But <laughs> it's it's I think it's gonna be a great game though, for sure. Yeah, it should be a good one. And enjoy your time there at uh MT Bank Stadium where you go. Um, so appreciate the both of y'all a lot for coming on. Thank you for joining me. Um, like I said, all the links to all of this stuff will be down below in the description. I know uh, my guy, Kenyatta, he will be checking y'all out. He probably does already. That's a Bengals fan that comes through on just about every single video. So I appreciate the support. He be talking this trash, but it's all in love. <laughs> so I appreciate the both of y'all. Much love. Keep doing what y'all been doing. And just keep having that, that, that positive impact, not just on the Bengals community, but just on the football community uh, in general. A lot of love for the both of y'all. Appreciate what both of y'all do. And thank you again. Man. Thank appreciate you for having you, me, bro. Really respect what you do, man. Appreciate you. Oh, yeah, for sure. All right, team, keep me clean. Appreciate y'all. And we out. And then he like the Ravens. Like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You too, team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it. Gotta made it. Boy, that's my homie. Ain't that right and graven. Right and graven. Shout out to Graven.